Okay, awesome. So welcome back everyone. Uh, our next presenter is Yilu, my colleague from Oregon. And he'll be talking about the programming exascale machines. Yi, if you're ready, please take it away. Thank you, Yasi. Thanks for inviting me for this presentation. Uh, I'm from Argon National Lab from the Computational Science Division. Today, we'll focus on OpenMP. Uh, okay. So the outline of the talk, I will mainly cover two topics. One is why you should consider OpenMP and then also how you need to do the analysis and design of your application before doing actual porting. A reminder, this is not an open tutorial. So if you need if, uh, a complete tutorial, please go for the ECP provided trainings. And also there are many hackathons about OpenMP, uh, especially offload for GPUs. Uh, around, they are folded all the year round. So there are materials online as well. So you can learn from them. This is also not an OpenMP offload optimization guide. So if you have interest in, interest in that, you could watch a video uh, I made for the, uh, for the supercomputing conference last year. There are, you may also have questions about OpenMP offload programming model performance. There are many studies, uh, some are done by the vendors. Uh, on Monday, you've seen Jeff Hammond mention some of those studies. And also you will find another Jeff from NVIDIA also did extensive studies about uh, offload performance. Uh, independently, you will find uh, Simon, his group from University of Bristol. They did extensive study of uh, programming models. Um, their, their performance, um, especially on GPUs. So let's start on the topics I want to cover. Why you should consider OEMP. So as you all know, that DOE is uh, bring up new machines at, at exascale level. Uh, there are machines close to exascale as well, like Matter and NERSC, those machines are all with uh, GPU accelerators. And all those machines, although they have extremely powerful CPUs, but the majority of the float point operation capability are on the GPUs. So you need to uh, port your code oriented towards those flops to maximize use of the, those machines. All those machines support OpenMP off offload programming model. That's why uh, you, this is the first very simple reason you need to uh, think about OpenMP. So what is OpenMP? Uh, a lot of people heard about this uh, brand. It's actually a kind of consortium. Uh, the name is called the Architecture Review Board. It covers uh, the teams from vendors, both hardware vendors and software vendors, as well as national labs and universities where these are the user or research side. So th this is a uh, directive based multi-language programming model, and it's uh, designed to be performant, uh, productive and portable. So if you look at the, uh, the companies, for example, you notice NVIDIA, AMD, Intel, uh, which nowadays are preparing for the GPUs, they are all there. As well as you might also uh, notice that there are like NEC who provides different kinds of accelerators. They are also part of the OpenMP and they do have support. There are software companies. You notice there are Cray, uh, which is HP nowadays, uh, then Red Hat, they uh, provide like GCCs and uh, uh, pre compiler support for the uh, GPUs. And there are also many vendors providing CPUs, which is we all familiar with about OpenMP from the very beginning. So it's a, a community quite large and involving and will bring this OpenMP to the best quality that can benefit from computing. 
uh, open P is not young, it's over 20 years old. From the, uh, so, and the size of the, uh, this uh, group, the community is growing. As a language support, OpenP open focus on C, C++ and Fortran, which is are mostly used by the applications in the scientific uh, computing world. And uh, one second. Yeah. So okay. So we are actually this table. Uh, this map is a uh, roadmap is a bit out of date. So as of today, the five point two has been released, and the standard, the specification is moving towards six point zero. But there's a non-stop improvement of existing features. So you find there are major releases and minor revi revisions. So, uh, so point one, point two, these are kind of improvement, uh, refinement of existing features. So on this roadmap, I would like to highlight some uh, clustering. So. In the early days of OpenMP, it's mostly focused on multi-socket, multi-core architectures on the CPU. So that's why from the 1.0 and 2.0, that's the major effort providing a threading support. From 3.0 beyond, it starts to add the tasking because we no more just have a single digit number of cores. The number of core count grows dramatically on CPU. And then from 4.0, we start to have accelerators. Like 4.0 is for the first generation of Xeon Phi accelerator. And from 4.5, the GPU support start to take off. And in the meantime, CPU also have uh, SIMD, which is kind of a vector unit on the uh, flow point unit. So vector computing is a topic on both CPU and GPU. That's the only way of bringing uh, energy efficient flow point operations. So the, there are, okay, so there are three clusters, although that the thread kind of extend always to today and tax also extends to today. So these threading, tasking, vector, acceler uh, vector plus uh, accelerator features are highly relevant to our exascale machines. So let's now first look at uh, how it exascale machine looks like. Here's a, a diagram of the compute node of parameter, which is very representative for actually all the uh, exascale machines. So it consists one powerful CPU. Some machines may have two, but it's a, a it's just you can even split this uh, one CPU as a two or virtually in mind. So it's um, a CPU attached with uh, hands uh, multiple GPUs. Some machine has four, some machine has six. And within the CPU, there are many cores. So that brings in multiple memory domains. And our rule of thumb, um, MPI plus X um, programming model, MPI are best placed at every memory domain. So that's why uh, people tend towards use one MPI per GPU. So if you divide the node by GPU, you will end up some with some sub node architectures with one GPU and about 10 cores, maybe 20 for, for some machines. So within this sub uh, node structure, you continue with your uh, the, the most familiar MPIX programming model. Here I add an S because to program this sub node, uh, you might need multiple programming parallel for parallel schemes for parallelism. The reason is the following. So you have quite a few number of cores. So you potentially need to do threading to fully utilize them. You have a GPU, so you need to do a asynchronous computing. And because of GPU, you also need to dispatch heavy compute workload to the GPU. So 
these features are not orthogonal to each other. So in many cases, they need to work with each other to make best use of the uh, compute capability within this sub subnode architecture. OpenMP is one of the uh, solutions after a complete support of all of these three uh, features, as I mentioned, threading, tasking, and GPU acceleration. And the app, uh, for apps, they can potentially select all of them or subset of them to based on their needs to maximize their code performance. So how does OpenP code look like? So let's first start from a uh, just vanilla CPU OpenP code you most people I assume are familiar with. So you it's OpenP is a direct directive based method. So you start with a parallel four. So you spawn a team of threads, then you distribute your concurrent loop into those uh, threads. With more involving, you need for GPU offload, you need to add a bit more because of the certain GPU uh, needs. So it's the, the directive becomes, you have to say target means it needs to go to an accelerator. And then you need to use uh, teams and parallel to spawn threads within the GPU accelerator, and then use distribute and for to kind of distribute those concurrent loops, make sure that make them fully parallelized. So here's just a simple diagram to help you understanding. So you need a target, target construct. You basically from the CPU tell the GPU you need you. GPU needs to execute certain things and also transfer data back and forth. You need target construct, use on teams of threads, and use parallel construct to spawn all the threads within the GPU. So you must do this to uh, leverage the full compute potential of a GPU. Oh, I'd like to mention that these uh, figures are borrowed from my colleague, Goli Batoni, for the Theta GQ training. Uh, then within, I think, for programming and exascale note that uh, this uh, code snippet shows all the components from OpenMP can be used to, to, to uh, release the full potential of the compute resource. So let me remind you, uh, there are on the CPU, you can have threads and you can do tasking uh, by doing a target no wait. So this is a GPU, a target task, a GPU task. Uh, so inside the GPU task, you, you uh, describe what kind of parallelism you want to do with respect to the computing. So you spawn threads, you distribute the workload. You also need to manage a bit of the data movement. You have the map cross. And you also have to do synchronization on the host. So you do some additional CPU task and with also task weight to kind of conclude and combine all the results. So all uh, OpenMP offload programming model offer you largely all the features that you essential to write for with even uh, write, write a GPU code. Um, I think it covers a large portion of the CUDA uh, like the vendor native programming law model of it. As it behaves, because we, we write OpenB code for performance. So uh, you, you've been, so you've seen a lot of studies on kernel performance. Uh, OpenP runtime performance is also part of it. So I explained you that you could use threads and do multi-thread offloads. That's also a kind of feature offered by OpenMP and vendors optimized for it. So you can have multiple host CPU threads doing offload. And uh, when you profile it with at the lower level, you see that CUDA streams being invoked for each thread and workloads being enqueued into the, those CUDA streams. And because of concurrent uh, concurrency and also a, the workload kind of make the uh, being enqueued into the GPU runtime. Eventually, GPU becomes very busy and uh, its full potential is being released. 
So, yeah, so you kind of take advantage of asynchronous uh, tasks from the host and make the GPU busy. Uh, so it's a, yeah, it's a feature that you you need to keep an eye on. That you should not just focus on optimizing the uh, GPU kernels. Okay, next. Yeah. So another important thing that is an essential to have a programming for a programming model like Open, it needs to interrupt with the vendor preferred programming model. Don't take this as a uh, granted. It's actually not so straightforward for certain programming models to expose you the low levels details and allow you to interrupt with uh, another programming model. So OpenMP has this, so it allows you to give it a device pointer uh, to call, uh, call a CUDA kernel that you had written for certain reasons, you need the absolute performance. So this gives you a lot of flexibility to combine the best part of both. You have portability for certain places, you can have performance, extreme performance You when you have that question in mind. So OpenP also allows to, you to coordinate execution uh, with the GPU runtime, the native one. So you can, you can extract the CUDA streams, for example, and also in queue callbacks to make the CUDA streams, CUDA runtime to inform OpenMP certain things are completed asynchronously. So for, uh, with regard uh, for the electronic structure community, because we heavily rely on BLAS and the LAPAC or kind of solvers, there can be dense versions, there's uh, uh, sparse versions, usually vendors offer them. So with OpenMP, with this interoperability, you can take advantage of, you have no difficulty using vendor provided accelerator libraries. You can do them directly uh, or uh, by, by using the interop feature or some in, in some vendor, from some vendors like Intel, you can use a variant dispatch to directly uh, just pull the library from open, uh, how to say, in, with OpenP directives. So now I introduce you the programming model uh, and tell you all the features uh, machine, what's the status of compilers, the tools that we, essential tools we need for development. Uh, I'm, I'm a QMC pack developer mainly, so I use it to kind of uh, investigate the status of the compilers. I was just a, uh, the, on the right side is a snapshot of the performance, uh, the feature tracking table for, from, for um, QMC pack mini app. And it's not up to date, it's from April. Uh, but you will see that actually uh, the, the failure rate is very low now today. And most of them are, are either pass the check or have a function prac implementation. So for the compilers, as of today, we have GCC, LLVM, and Cray compilers working on AMD and NVIDIA GPUs. Intel is the only the only option is for API, but soon we will see that LVM, the open source one, will have that as well. Uh, there are vendor supported uh, compilers like Rockm for MD GPU and VHPC for NVIDIA GPU. So it's actually uh, most of the GPU vendors you will have at least two or three compilers actually to use, and vendors do cross validate the, their implementations. So when there's an issue, actually, you are not stuck with a particular compiler uh, because that's the, the only one support the programming model that vendor chooses. So I think the, the overall compiler world is much more healthy today. So the second part of my book will be uh, help you to analyze and design your application actually before you do heavy lifting porting work. Here first is a reminder of the GPU architecture, some of the GPU characteristics you should not forget. 
So it's, this part is not OpenP offload specific. It's more about generic GPU pro program uh, to start with. So when we mention OpenP, people, some people think it's just adding a line of Pragma, uh, Pragma OMP Parallel 4 on a loop, even in just doing the CPU pro, uh, OpenMP program. I would say that's a really oversimplified statement uh, or, or a misunderstanding. Uh, to get the CPU OpenMP in good performance, actually it needs to be a well-designed application and the implementation needs to kind of adapt to the hardware. So again, for OpenMP GPU offload implementation, it's also not as simple as just adding target next to your existing parallel four, because you need to remember that doing GPU offloads, the hardware has its own characteristics. It has GPU and CPU on the node. There are at least two memory domains and they are connected by, a, by an extremely slow bus. Uh, second is, it's an accelerator. So every time you launch an operation on GPU, there's an added latency. Then you, to, you need to find ways to amortize it by heavier computing or by adding, uh, by, by, by doing more asynchronous to hide those costs. So you probably have heard about roof line analysis. Usually we do roof line analysis on the compute device. That is one line for the, the roof. So one is for the uh, flops on the compute side. There's also the, the line for the memory where, which refers to how fast you can pull data into your compute device. So, in the case of the accelerator, you can think about uh, the accessing the data from the host, the DDR memory, is actually a way of pulling data into the compute device. So you can draw the line of PCIe bandwidth onto this plot, and you will find it's at least it's roughly two order of mag magnitude slower than the default memory space on the GPU. That's the HBM. So that, that means you need to put all your effort to minimize the data movement. Uh, think about, mostly you have to think about put a right uh, separation between your CPU activities and GPU activities. So keep that in mind. Uh, when making a separation, that decision of uh, se separating CPU GPU, you ha also have to take into account that on the GPU side, there's enough workload. There's a sufficient concurrency. Uh, that concurrency also needs to be data par parallelism, the data parallel pattern. The reason is uh, more than CPUs and GPUs. They both have a lot of compute capability and it has at least two level of uh, designs in the hardware. So there's always a coarse grain uh, uh, hardware building blocks, which vendors use them to scale up the compute device. And there's also a fine level uh, building blocks uh, on which within, uh, within that unit, you also have a lot of compute power, but it also can, it contains a compute side scratch memory that to, for you to maximize the data efficiency with, with good data locality. So you actually, if you look at that on a NVIDIA GPU, you notice there are about a hundred um, this core, course level blocks and at the fine level, hardware-wise, there are at least like 64 uh, CUDA, CUDA threads in the hardware. So if you combine them, that to have a reasonable compute kernel to utilize the GPU, you need an order of 10 to the fourth or 10 to the five, fifth um, uh, loop 
iteration steps, uh, iteration space to get best of the uh, GPU efficiency. So now there are I'll give two cases. You have to think that uh, whether this is, it, they are both inappropriate to be ported directly to a GPU using the open PL flows by, by doing simple things. So the first case is uh, the code has bottom level threading. So it's, it's not uncommon, especially in MPI heavy codes, that people just do some lower level. Uh, threading, adding parallel for at lower level, and it only needs to scale up to like four or eight threads. People are happy with that because it's really low effort. Other than not suitable for GPU. So workload per GPU thread is too low in this case. Mm. And even on the CPU land, fork, fork join impact, maybe you can take a kind of a, a tolerate it, I think about GPU that the compute is 10 times faster while the uh, to start and stop the overhead is probably 100 times slower. So we think about that is uh, using the end of flow, you will notice that this is not possible, uh, giving, won't give you good performance on GPU at all. And in certain cases, there are uh, two small the, the, this type of uh, loop is has too small iteration space. So, well, which is not sufficient for GPU. As I said, you need the 10 to the fourth, 10 to the fifth uh, iteration space to go through. So in this case, you have to think about uh, to change, move up in the core stacks and make the workload heavier per kernel code. And if there are, if this loop has like a hundred, a thousand iterations, maybe it's a good a level as the fine grain uh, parallelism to be used within the bigger kernel. The second case is. Uh, um, quick question, Yi, how, how much further are we from the end? Because I think we are at the quick Q and A session I right think, now. <laughs> oh, I thought I have 30 minutes, no? It was 25 minutes plus five minutes questions. Oh, okay. I think I have like <laughs> two slides at maximum. Okay, okay. The, the second case is people have OpenB code, CPU OpenB code using high level threading. And uh, there's actually issues with directly putting those high level threading into GPU because High level threading means there are a lot of operations unrelated to the key, compo uh, key, compute, key um, computation. And there are a lot of unrelated things that if you do port that, you will bring them to GPU. So a lot of porting efforts are unnecessary. And for another pattern is if you have Monte Carlos, there are divergence in the threading behaviors that will also not friend play friendly with GPU. So you have to think about make those replica loops lower to the com uh, compute heavy routines and also leave this kind of uh, uh, task parallelism to the high level and leave it to open. So based on that, you have to think about how to uh, make the kernel bit and then leave all these uh, GPU unfriendly portion to the CPU. So take the amount of tasking, take the advantage of threading. And OpenP condition also offers you multi-GPU support. So if you really need to think and need that, could correct that. Okay, number eight. OpenP is a powerful programming model, which will, uh, will be offered on all the GPU exascale machines. But for application porting, you need to do in-depth analysis before taking actions. Think about all the restrictions by the GPU hardware and software. So as application developers, we are responsible to find more concurrency and map them, map them properly to the underlying hard hardware. OpenMP is only a tool. Once we get those design right, it enables the uh, performance for us. Okay, that's it. Thank you, Ray. Um, sorry, thank you, Yi. Um, are there any questions? I know we will have the group discussions right after that. So if there are any questions.
So the question is, what are the main obstacles for doing high level trading above MPI? Uh, actually, I don't understand the question. What does it mean above MPI? Yes, um, Mr. Alfredo, how are you? Um, so you mentioned about low level trading um, inside MPI task. I'm talking about doing MPI trading um, above MPI task. So for example, if you have like an, <clears throat> let's say part of the computation that uses MPI already, and then you do parallel over that through trading. Uh, so I, I think because MPI is process, well, like open MPI or GPU programming, uh, programming, you typically do things within the process. So uh, I would say usually you just first run your program one MPI per GPU and do profiling and see where uh, all the idling. Then put, put that with the open MPI. That's the uh, way of my, how to say to putting strategy and uh, uh, for applications of which has already experienced open MP threading they probably have a good picture of how their application behaves I would say that uh, so, some people feel that okay I my code doesn't have open MP threading in the past uh, maybe I can jump this step but for me, conceptually, that even you put directly to GPU, you have to think about threading, think about con concurrency, which is uh, uh, natural to do any parallel programming. Okay, thanks. Cool. Any other final questions? Otherwise, we are going to go and transition into our group discussion portion of the meeting.